Hey there, YouTube friends. Mask Bandit here, and we're looking outside my window on a very wet, rainy day. But we have tickets to the zoo today, the Houston Zoo. And so, because of the pandemic, we had to make these reservations weeks ago. And it's Members' Day to explore the new Pantanal exhibit, which is technically not opening until tomorrow. So we are definitely going to make our trip in the rain. Uh, it's me and my kiddos, uh, but because of the restrictions and the pandemic, we're having to wear a mask, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the Dollywood video, and I am going to be doing all of my commentary post-trip. <laughs> post so, yeah, we're going to make our way to the Houston Zoo. Probably going to get a little wet, but you know what? Eh, we're prepared. We have our umbrellas and our ponchos. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this little visit to the Houston Zoo, including the brand new Pantanal exhibit. One of the biggest things that's happening in the Houston Zoo right now is that they are actually refurbishing a large percentage of the zoo for its, I believe, 100th anniversary. And I think by 2022, something like 80% of the zoo is going to have been overhauled. And it started a couple years ago with the wetland exhibit that I did a video on way long time ago when it first opened. And then the next big addition is what we're going to be looking at today, the Pantanal exhibit. Pantanal, Pantanal, I don't know. The, the, uh, the Amazonian uh, wetland exhibit. Uh, it's fantastic. Just can't wait for you to see it. Anyway, upon entry, uh, they've moved the entrance to the zoo. They, they've basically demolished the entire entrance area. But can't make a trip to the zoo without seeing some sea lions. So we saw the sea lions. My kiddos actually spent a large amount of time running back and forth just chasing them. They were playing a little game. It's cute. Uh, since I do like to see how zoos are put together and just exactly what these habitats look like, you're going to see me spend extra amount of time kind of looking at the habitat design and, you know, how things are put together. Uh, it's mostly for me and all my viewers who like to watch Planet Zoo, so if that's one of you, you might hopefully be able to glean some details for your builds to help make them a little more realistic and uh, just, you know, make them look a little bit more zoo so here's a little look at our ex-entrance area that they are currently transitioning into the Galapagos Islands. So no idea what that's supposed to look like, but I am super excited. Wanted to get you some good views of like the main drag here. Um, lots of construction fences all around. Lots of fences up for COVID too, uh, but like the whole zoo's under construction. So you got to be kind of flexible if you're going to be going. Uh, and not to mention the whole pandemic, we have a one-way system. You're allowed to walk uh, in one direction pretty much, although they have reopened a lot of the indoor exhibits. So you can get to, I'd say about 85, 90% of the zoo. The children's zoo is still closed, but that's just the realities of the world we currently live in. Masks are required. Uh, everyone did a great job. Everyone was wearing their masks, and it was outdoors, which was really helpful. So uh, just looking here a bit at the wetlands exhibit and kind of how it's grown, if you're curious to see what it looked like when it first opened. Again, the video for that is on the channel. Um, it's really grown in, even since the last time uh, I was here, which was only a couple months ago, I think. It feels way more lush and grown in. Finally got to see the alligators moving. The nice thing about going to the zoo in the rain on a cool day, the animals are far more active. Uh, never had seen these alligators actually move under their own power before. They're always just bobbing around. And my goodness, these things have gotten so big since they were first put in a couple of years ago. So that's really exciting to see them actually acting and doing things. And we've had to cross through this area to get to the brand new Pantanal exhibit, which is coming up right here on the right the construction fences are technically are actually still up because as i said i uh, made this video on october the 9th and uh, the exhibit does not open until the 10th so members got early access and i i really really felt special <laughs> <laughs> I felt so fancy. I got to uh, flash my membership card and we got to take a look here at this beautiful exhibit. Uh, I was fully inspired to do something like this in Planet Zoo and now that this is open, I think it's great reference for what we could potentially do in Planet Zoo. Um, beautiful exhibit. It kind of tells the story of how the water levels kind of determine 
uh, the habitat. And it starts with a flooded area, and that's where most of the water animals are. There's an anaconda here. Uh, but the main draw for this area is absolutely no doubt the uh, river otters. And they are an absolute blast. But I wanted to give you a good look here at this entrance area, the, all, the, all the rock work and stuff. And the whole idea is you're under this stilted up house, which I would assume would probably flood uh, IRL. So here's a look at some of the howler monkeys and the tamarins. Uh, that have been relocated. They were each in separate exhibits in other places of the zoo and it's been really really neat to see them kind of shuffle animals to get them more in line with where and who they would be interacting with in the real uh, in, in the wild. So that's really cool to see some a, a lot of mixed species habitats which I think for me, it, it makes me feel more engrossed in, in the area. Here's the first look at this brand new river otter exhibit, which is just incredible. Uh, it took a while, took a while for the otters to come over to us, uh, but that's okay. This is a fairly large habitat, and they do a really good job of blocking your views. You can't see the whole thing the entire time, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so just kind of showing off the little, the way that work, the, the information boards and all that work. Here we go. Listen. <laughs> that noise is outrageous. You can actually hear me laugh in my recording. It is, that was really shocking. I thought that it was closed in. The glass is actually not attached to the top of the building. It's open air. There's a big gap so you can get the sounds. Uh, so that's super cool. And here's on the other side of their habitat. They have this slide and to actually be able to see them use it was so awesome. And that alone worth the trip. If you just I this was such a pleasant surprise. I had no idea how much I love otters and seals, but I had no idea how much I would enjoy this, and I would absolutely love to see these kinds of animals brought into Planet Zoo. I think that would just be fantastic. They moved the blue macaws from the front of the zoo uh, into this area, which makes total sense to me. And they have a, uh, a curacao, a, a blue curacao up there. And now here is the jaguar habitat. Again, the jaguar was over by the big cats, which we'll have some clips of at the end, of the, near the end of the video. But the jaguar has its own area now, and uh, it's a huge exhibit, or at least it looks huge. And I love all the overgrowth, and this it, it really does feel like you're in a jungle. And I love how it has all this area to climb in. We've got the pools of water. Um, I'm just blown away at how nice they did. And uh, it took me a while to find the jaguar. I couldn't, I couldn't find him. Um, but then all of a sudden, oh wait, he was right there the whole time. Check him out. I was really cool to be able to be so close. He has a bridge he can walk over uh, with the netting there. Uh, now I'm not sure if there's a lot for him to do across the bridge. I know that's where the night house is for it. Uh, as to keep her about that, but it does have access to that bridge throughout the day. So, and then the last big exhibit is this mixed exhibit that has all these different birds, uh, capybaras, I think capybara, and uh, tapirs and giant ant eaters, which is super duper cool. Um, really great job. I'm not sure if these big broadleaf plants are native to South America. Uh, I'd assume because Houston is subtropical, it might have an easier time growing some of those plants than say a zoo in up north or something like that. There's a good look at the tape here. I was blown away at how big they were. I had no idea they were that huge. Um, super cool though to see all the different animals interacting with each other. That was a neat thing that I didn't realize I would... Um, I guess really appreciate as much as I actually did, as weird as that sounds. But showing off here, just how close the tapirs and the other animals could actually get, you know, if they chose to. Um, yeah, just, I was just floored, just floored. <laughs> I love these birds. I don't remember what they're called. I know they're not ostriches, but, and I just, I love it. They're so fun and they move together in their little flock. It's, it was really cute, really well done. A lot of talk about how humans impact and how humans have to learn and are learning to live together with these uh, special creatures in this special habitat, 
One of the things near the river otters mentioned how once governments realize that they can charge people to get in a little canoe and go find them in the wild, suddenly they don't want to destroy their habitat anymore because they're revenue makers. And that's that's both cool and sad at the same time that without, you know, an economic gain, I guess there's not much point in preserving and protecting for some people but it was nice to see that ecotourism and stuff like that one of the things that's actually in the planet zoo education boards is um is is starting to kind of tick up apparently which is always really cool to hear because it would be a shame if the only place you could see these animals would be in a zoo some more fun birds my daughter said it looked like they had pumpkins on their beaks which i completely agree with <laughs> i think these might be another species of curacao it was really funny though because they're, the zoo is in transition here they've got their halloween their boo zoo boo at the zoo is what they call it they have that going on right now but they have so much prep to do for their big christmas season uh zoo lights that they're starting to put up zoo lights and like that train thing there is clearly a christmas thing and they just have it out i think <laughs> it was really funny to see christmas stuff next to spiders and and spider webs and big inflatable pumpkins uh there was a dragon exhibit and that's just a little remnant of the dragon exhibit that's now closed um my son loves gorillas and monkeys so we decided uh, and and chimps so we decided to swing through the african area when i first moved here this was the newest area to the zoo uh, and it was kind of cutting edge then but what i think is funny is how just in 10 years 12 years you can see how much exhibits have changed uh like this giraffe exhibit now feels really small and it might just be the way it's designed, not so much the actual square footage. And you've got sort of an idea of mixed habitats, but it doesn't necessarily feel like the habitat was designed for that necessarily. Um, I mean, it's still a beautiful exhibit, don't get me wrong. It's just, I think it's interesting how even in 10 years you can see some changes with how exhibits like the Pantanal tells a clear story about the water and how the water influences the habitats and the species and this is more just like let's just theme it to africa <laughs> which don't get me wrong this is my favorite part of this is my favorite architecture in the zoo i think they knocked it out of the park here this african area um they've got all kinds of you know i've never actually been in the twiga cafe which apparently someone said is swahili for giraffe which i totally get now that makes a lot of sense <laughs> But I do love the giraffes here. You saw just a couple seconds ago. Got a really good look at a giraffe messing around with the with the trees. I thought that was really cool. They, I haven't ever been that close to them, short of the one time I was able to feed them. But this little area feels so cozy and just the closest to a theme park uh, to most from just about any zoo that I've been to. I, I really really think they did a uh, did a good job and i know you've seen this again if you've watched my other zoo video but i really wanted to take my time and walk through it and give you my commentary after the fact where i could mull on what i was going to say because my real-time reactions aren't necessarily <laughs> always the best but rhino habitats uh, i i made it through without saying at the zoo every time i go i say kind of these rhinos and i didn't say it this time i was very proud of myself but then i guess i just said it on the video didn't i so <laughs> the gorillas decided to be outside in the rain which is surprising they did look quite grumpy um i wanted to show off this area because i thought it was really cool i think that's a little meeting room or area you can rent out if you have gobs and gobs of money like i could see a company hosting a little event there some cool tortoises and my favorite african cattle in the back i love those guys here he comes, boom, 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 And of course, we then proceeded to boom, 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 down to the lions, my kids and I, where they were all leaning up against the glass in the underground viewing exhibit, which we don't normally go into. So it was actually cool to go up and get nice and close to them like this. They didn't care. It was really, really cool to see how close they were. Um, and then it's a little bit of the bears and some elephants and that's pretty much a cap on our day i did just want to spend the most time today going over the new pantanal exhibit which is just again cannot recommend it enough i am not a zoologist i don't know a lot about zoos uh obviously i i just like going to them but i really enjoyed that experience it was really good and finally the bear is out very rarely do i ever see the bear doing something 
being out, first of all, let alone doing anything. So it's very cool to get to see him doing something. So there you go. Get a nice close-up of the uh, American black bear, or brown bear. Black bear, even though it's brown. Uh, they are native to Texas, which is really kind of cool. So, And with that, that is just about the end of our zoo trip. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new or haven't yet, please consider subscribing. And I will see all of you for something new on the channel real soon. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.